Hello, this is Rezorat from Radicad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about domains in Microsoft Fabric, what they are, how they play an important role in your data analytics solution, how they can help you to build a data mesh architecture combined with workspaces, what are things that are specific in domain and how you use it as some demos and examples. Let's go and check it out. To start talking about domains, let's first start talking about Microsoft Fabric. Very brief introduction. What is Microsoft Fabric? Uh, Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end data analytics solution provided by Microsoft uh, Software as a Service introduced in May 2023 this year in Microsoft Build. It includes multiple workloads, uh, which covers pretty much all the aspects of a data analytics from data engineering, data warehousing, uh, data integration, business intelligence, intelligence and all parts of it as well as the storage engine which is using one leg. Uh, I have a separate video about Microsoft Fabric and some other videos about some other um, aspects of it, some other workloads of it, so go ahead and check those out in our channel if you are interested. Uh, Microsoft Fabric is a data analytics solution. Now, um, talking about data analytics in general and not only in Microsoft area, um, uh, there are different architectures. One of those architectures is called data mesh. What, what data mesh is and how it is helpful. So in um, in these days, recently, uh, there are data pretty much everywhere. You have uh, organizations with lots of data, data related to the sales, data related to the um, purchasing, data related to the uh, customer service, data related to IT, human resource. There are data in different operation systems, in different aspects of a business, uh, and, and that is good. But that also brings um, the challenge of how would you uh, put an architecture or a structure around uh, accessing these data so that people can have access to this data, uh, like every business unit have access to their own data, but sometimes they might need to access to some parts of it. Other business units data, would you centralize all the data in one place? and serve it to others, or would you decentralize it? So there are different architectures for it. One of those architectures is data mesh. Data mesh is a dis decentralized architecture. It talks about uh, having business domains. For example, when you have a, a business area of sales, another for marketing, another for customer service, finance, IT, you can consider each of these business areas as a domain. These domains can include their own entities, their own data items, such as data integrations, visualizations, things like that. And they would be interconnected. So some, um, usually the sales entities are accessible by the sales team and everyone who is data analyst or data developer in sales team, but they might also sometimes need to access to marketing data or sometimes access to other places data. So, uh, so this brings the aspect of a data mesh where you have different domains. And uh, Microsoft Fabric domain is basically the same thing. So the whole Microsoft Fabric in an organization goes under one tenant and uh, uh, storage for that tenant is supported by one lake, which is a logical storage on top of Azure Data Lake storage gen two underneath. And this um, uh, storage uh, underneath would uh, have a logical grouping on top of it. This logical grouping is called domains. So fabric domains are actually logical groups of um, entities, fabric items, whatever you might call it, so that you can separate these into different areas. For example, one group for marketing, one group for sales, one group for uh, customer service. Each of these groups uh, can have their own page, um, header, image. You can have access levels, like who is the owner of this, usually the business owner of that part, data business owner of that part is the uh, administrator of that. You can have contributors in each of these and uh, inside, these, uh, inside these domains, then you can have workspaces. And workspaces themselves can include uh, fabric items, data warehouse, lake house, data flow, um, data pipelines, notebooks, any, anything that you create inside the fabric environment. So consider domain as a 
place that you can have workspaces underneath that like this is a higher level than a workspace and it is not just a, a structure it comes with access around it it comes with the page it comes with some configurations around it so you might sometimes have um, um, like in addition to tenant administrator you might also have domain administrator as well uh, and the interconnection between these is also provided by a feature in one lake called uh, one copy and shortcuts one copy and shortcuts uh, is making entities of one of the domains available in other domains like a link where you don't really copy the data um, or let's say duplicate the data you don't do that and you don't move the data so data sits where it is and uh, there will be a link to this from another entity like a lake house in um, domain one uh, would have a shortcut of um, of a table in a warehouse in domain two and that would would be like an internal table you can write SQL command that query that as well as your internal tables um, and shortcut and one copy itself require another video which I'm going to talk about it uh, in the future but for now this shortcut and one copy would create a link between uh, fabric domains as well uh, so altogether this helps in building that data mesh but with that you also have some uh, role distribution some um, um, access levels in it so at the highest access level we always have the fabric admin um, similar to power bi administrator tenant administrator this is um, someone who can actually build uh, new domains delete domains set up the domains as well as do a lot of other things in the tenant as well uh, under that we have domain administrator so domain administrator of domain one for example wouldn't have access to domain two unless uh, fabric tenant admin actually uh, give that access to that person the domain administrator usually have admin privilege only on that domain can control that domain configure it um, add contributors to it but cannot delete the domain cannot remove other administrators from the domain uh, domain contributor are usually workspace administrator these workspace administrators can assign their workspaces into that domain they can assign or reassign it depending on which domains they have access to and they would be contributors of the workspace structure in that domain and of course under that because we have workspace uh, so you have workspace admin under workspace um, you have other roles such as member contributor and viewer which I have a separate video about it uh, what they do but their control is around their workspace itself not in the bigger picture of the domain so domain administrator and domain contributor are uh, more around the domain uh, so these are access levels now uh, let's uh, go and check uh, these in a demo and action and see how it works so how domains works as a demo so let's go and check it out when you are in Microsoft Fabric or Power BI environment you can even go to the uh, Microsoft Fabric portal and um, in any of these usually you start with the admin portal so of course to start with the domains uh, you can go to the setting from there you can go to admin portal the first time to create the domain this has to be done by a fabric tenant admin because uh, the domain has to be created then you can make other domain admins so that they can go and create or, um, or configure the domain not to create it. Uh, so in the um, admin portal we have a section for domains as you see here and, and uh, here you can create a domain creating domain is a really simple process you just set a name for this for example human resource you can uh, put some descriptions this is the place for entities for HR things like that so that's creating the domain you can then assign uh, an image to the domain image is like a header picture where uh, when you go into that area you will see that so let's say for HR I would put something like this 
Um, so that is like a header image, as you can see. Uh, now you can assign domain admins. Um, like for example, I can make my other account a domain admin uh, or as many as other people as you want. These people would not be able to remove the domain. The domain would stay there. They cannot even remove other admins, but they can change configurations such as the, you know, the description of the domain, the image of that, or contributors of that. Um, so I just add domain admin as well. And then uh, you can have domain contributors. So domain contributors, these are like workspace admins. These are people that you would uh, authorize them to assign workspaces into your domain or uh, or assign it to other domains, but then they should have access to other workspaces as well. Uh, so don't come, don't confuse these two. The domain admin can do higher level configuration and add domain contributors, but domain contributors can only assign workspaces to that. You can also assign workspaces to to this yourself, and to do that, you just click on assign workspaces. You can search for workspaces by their name or uh, you can uh, search for an admin and get all workspaces of that admin or search for capacity, get all workspaces for that capacity. And, and you can choose any of these uh, that you want. For example, I'll just go and select one of these. Let's say, um, for example, this one, I assign this workspace to this. So you can add as many as workspaces you want. In addition to these settings, you also have uh, some settings that you can change um, from the tenant configuration. So in the tenant configuration, we have a certification endorsement and you can overwrite it. And you can say, for example, if in the tenant, the certification is done by this group in my domain, in this domain, we can do it by another group. And, and that is how it is um, then would be done for this domain. And then you'd see all the list of the current domains you have in here. Uh, but because I'm the fabric admin, I will see all the domains. If uh, I'm only admin of one of these domains, when I come here, I would see only that domain. So that is the setup and configuration for it. Then the next part is, um, is how workspaces would re would be working with this. So when I go to the workspace section, if I have a workspace associated with any of these domains, I would see this link beside it. And when I hover on it, it will tell me that this workspace, for example, is part of the sales domain. When I click on it, when I hover on it, it shows me that this is part of the sales domain. For example, I can go to the workspace setting. If I am, uh, I have access to change that, I can come here and change the domain of that to another domain. Of course, I've, I've, I need to have access to the other domain that I'm changing to as well. That is part of it. Another part of it is that in the One Lake Data Hub, which is the place that you see all the fabric uh, items. Uh, so you see all the fabric items here, but then you can here filter by the domain. Like for example, I filter by sales. The reason you don't see the other two domain that I have is that there is no data entity under those. Uh, there is no fabric item under those. Those workspaces are empty. Uh, so when you filter it, you'll see the image, the header image of that, and you see all the content <coughs> under that available here. So that is how uh, domains works in, um, in a demo. Very